Welcome to Fair Game. I'm Christine Leahy. My guest today was a Saturday Night Live cast member for nine seasons. He starred in Weeds, Happy Gilmore, The Wedding Singer, many other classic comedies, and now he's hosting his own show on YouTube. Kevin Nealon, it's really awesome to meet you. No, me, you. Really? Yes. Because I've watched you for a very long time. I grew up watching you. You did? Yes. How is that I, possible? I, I don't know how things wow. happen, but TV is amazing. That's amazing. You are just so riveting to watch. Thank you're I mean, like the a Benjamin Button the, then, if you could I go know. back and watch me when I was coming up. Well, it's amazing now with social media what you can do. You, <laughs> know. you could watch my entire yeah. career. Okay, well I feel like I watched yours, sort of. Yeah, but, I'm sure you did. Yeah, and I've watched a lot of your, your YouTube and this, this hiking thing that you have, which I think is really, really cool. But I first want to start with this. You tried to play football in the USFL. Is this true? Well, the truth is, Christine, I played a lot of sandlot football growing up. Okay, that because counts. Because I was never out of school that long because we moved a lot. Uh huh. Uh, and uh, so I lived in Europe for a while when I was a kid. So I played soccer. You know, okay. growing up, just sandlot. You know, playground soccer. And then I, I came to the states and um, we played a lot of sandlot football. And I was always moving to different schools because we moved a lot. And so I never like got into a high school where I could be on the team. You know, and um, and I was five eight when I graduated high school. And I'm six four now. Wow. Yeah. Whoa. At a late that happened growth in spurt. college? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. You so, must have been thrilled. I was. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't even remember thinking about being short. I mean, I just, you know, not that 5'8 is short, but. But what a grew. great time to have a growth spurt. I know it. And then, so in college, I played soccer Kay. for three years. And then I played rugby for three years. And then a friend of mine, uh, Bill Brackett from Connecticut, said, Kev, we can play um, organized football at this college. And I've never played organized football uh -huh. before. Sandlot. We had the helmets and the shoulder pads, and we played the gang from across town. No yeah. referees, so it was really Great. tough football, you know. So your rugby skills no were rules. very helpful. Rugby, soccer, and then the no ref football. Yeah. I was ready to go, and okay. I had a good arm. You know, I could throw far. You were the quarterback. I was quarterback and the kicker and the punter. Oh wow. Yeah, and this team wasn't very good. So the school was Fairfield University. Bill found out that if we took a night course, three credits, that would qualify us to play for the club football team. <laughs> so we signed up for criminology. <laughs> we each took a course in criminology. We went, I think we went three times each. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, um, and we tried out for the team, and we got on the team. And the starting quarterback got hurt two games in. So I came in, and wow. I became the quarterback. And um, I got, I think, uh, MVP, and he got, my friend Bill got nominated All-American. All wow. So but how do you go from football to want to Wanting to be a comedian. Well, I always wanted to be a comedian. Okay. I wanted to be a singer, but I was really shy. And okay. For me, for some reason, getting on stage and singing was really intimate for me. Okay. Even though my voice is beautiful. But then, <laughs> if you're shy, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say comedians are shy. A lot of them are shy. A lot Off of them stage. are terrified when they start. I was terrified to get on stage. Okay. I remember when I first got into it, it was at the Improv. It was the first place I got on in Hollywood. So cool. Yeah. Not and a bad place to start, by the way. No, no. <laughs> in fact, I was just there with a the bartender earlier today with Eddie, who took my spot like Aww. 35 years ago. See, I used to bartend there yeah. for two years. So he took my spot. He's still working there. Really? So we were reminiscing on his podcast about that. So, um, but I, would, I was so intimidated to get on stage. I would drive down. I was sleeping on a friend's couch in um, Downey. We used to be lifeguards in Connecticut. Uh -huh. And... I would sleep on his couch and I'd drive in every Sunday night to the improv for the open mic night. And I was terrified. I'd sit out in my car and I'd wait. And I'd watch. And I wouldn't go in. And then the next week I'd come back. I'd go inside, but I wouldn't put my name in the hat, you know? And, and it was just a gradual thing until finally I got on. And it was like 1.30 in the morning. There was just two tables full of drunks. And I went on and I loved it. And I was so hooked because that's where everybody would watch. Andy Kaufman would perform mm -hmm. and Robin Williams. And, you know, it was just, and I never looked back. So how did it happen? You did the, the Tonight Show and Johnny Carson was hosting. How did that come together? Well, that was the only game in town at the time. You know, yeah. this is back in the 1900s. Mm -hmm. Precisely. And Johnny Carson was the king. Mm -hmm. And if you got on that show as a stand-up, that um, validated you. It was like passing your bar exam as a lawyer. Sure. So everybody aspired to do that. And his time was, you know, ticking down. He was getting ready to retire. So it, it was, you know. Uh, there was a deadline, so I auditioned a few times for it, and I was never so nervous. I had sweat coming down the back of my legs, <laughs> <laughs> and um, and I, I never I didn't pass the uh, thing, and then 
the talent coordinator. You didn't pass the audition. I didn't pass it. No. Okay. The talent coordinator uh, had me come in and audition for a show that was produced by Michael Nesmith, who used to be with the Monkees. Okay. And uh, it was a comedy sketch show. And so I did what I thought would be good that I that made me laugh. So I used to do a thing in my act back then in 1984 called uh, Choices. Would you rather do this or that? Okay, so great game. Gross things. It's a game now. Yeah. But back then it wasn't. I was doing it. It was my act. You invented this. Let's just say I don't you did. know that I invented it, but I, when we're kids, we probably did that. Got it. You know? okay. But I, I kind of think I brought it to light on TV. Okay. And so he said, I have good news and bad news. The bad news is, um, I don't think you're right for the Michael Nesmith show, but I think you'd be great to be on Johnny. Oh. And my heart kicked into gear. And I'm still, I get choked up still thinking about that. And he said, Can you do it on Monday? And this was Friday. Oh my God. I said, Yes. And I was going to Houston to do a club that, that weekend. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to do it. I wanted to just do that five minutes. So in my head, that's all I thought about was that five minute spot. Yeah. And if I could be talking to you now, and you think I'm listening to you, I was going over that five minute spot in my head. Yeah. You know? And um, so Monday came along. And mind you, I used to go to the Tonight Show all the time. When I first moved out here, uh -huh. I knew that I could get a ticket if I just went up and down that line. I said, does anybody have an extra ticket? Because uh -huh. they're free. And somebody would invariably say, yeah, I have one. So it was like seeing a Vegas show every night. I would right. see Paul McCartney there. And, and I knew the format. I knew when Johnny came out, said hi to the audience before the show started, and Ed McMahon, and all. And I knew every band member, you know, what they did. And, and so now I'm standing behind the curtain, ready to go on. And we come back from commercial, and the curtain's closed, and my talent coordinator's there, the guy, and he's trying to keep me happy. And <laughs> I hear Johnny introduce me. The band stops. Johnny introduced me. The curtain opens, and I walk out and they're applauding, and I'm like, this is heaven. Aww. But I've forgotten my act. I can't remember it. I can't remember my act. So what'd you do? I continue walking out to that little tee on the floor, and they're applauding, and they're applauding, and it's getting closer. They're starting to slow down with the applause, and my mouth is really dry, and as the last clap happened, I remembered my opening line, and I went into my act, and it just, they, I had applause breaks and laughs, and I could hear Johnny laughing. And I didn't smile because my mouth was so dry. I knew if I smiled, <laughs> my lip would stick up there, you know? And I didn't want to lick it because then people know, oh, he's got cotton mouth, you know? So I adjust and bring the lower thing up, you know? Because <laughs> that's the better option. Yeah, that's a better option. <laughs> and I finished, and then I went back, and Johnny gave me that thing, and I go behind the curtain, and the talent coordinator, who I was so afraid of before, is he's going, yeah, that was great, that was great. Stay here, I think Johnny wants to talk to you on the couch. Oh. That's what I said. Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and uh, so um, I went out on the couch. I got pat, you know, I got to do the couch, which is a real feather in your cap if sure. you do that. And I had more laughs. And I bumped the actress that was on after me, this Asian actress, whom I thought was gorgeous. And we started dating for six months after that. So it was uh, a real score. That for was me. a life changing it day was, for you I've, in many ways. I've never had anything like that happen to me since then. Even SNL or Weeds or any of those shows. That day was, you know, monumental for me. So SNL happened because of your roommate? Um, the, this SNL thing happened because of, uh, primarily because my roommate, Dana Carvey, mm -hmm. um, suggested me, recommended me to Lauren Michaels, because he got on that summer for that coming uh, fall. Mm -hmm. and, and Dana, um, he's a mimic, you know, he's a good impressionist, and yeah. he's a, um, you know, good comic, but he would be perfect for that show. I was just a stand-up, mm -hmm. and I was dating Jan Hooks at the time, who also got on the show that, that season, but she wasn't really selected yet, but mm -hmm. she was up for it. And I was happy for both of them. And um, so um, Dana goes to New York that summer, and the show's going to start in the fall, and I get a phone call from him out of the blue. He goes, Kev, I'm out at Laura Michaels' house in Amagansett, Long Island. Mm -hmm. I'm in the back bedroom. Guess who's in the kitchen? Bill Murray and Dan Aykroyd. I said, you're kidding me. He goes, no, anyway, um, I recommended you to Lauren, and I think he's want to see your tapes because they're looking for one more cast member. I said, Bill Murray and Dan Aykroyd are in the kitchen? <laughs> you just didn't even hear I wasn't even hearing the other stuff because I knew I'd never get it. Mm -hmm. But I sent my tapes in, and, uh, and two weeks later, I get another call from Dana. Kev, I'm back at Lauren Michaels' house. Guess who's in the kitchen? Steve Martin. I said, you're kidding me. He goes, no, anyway, Lauren likes your tapes. I think they're going to fly you in for an audition. I said, Steve Martin's really in the kitchen. <laughs> Anyway, for me, you know, I went in, I flew in. It was just a free trip to New York for me. That's all I thought it would be. Just the know? best. Yeah. And I get on the plane, and of course, everybody on the plane's auditioning for that one role. No way. Yeah, yeah. And Everyone on the plane? 
pretty much. Where even were you the, flying even from? Even the captain flew out, came out of the cockpit. He goes, hey, you like this from my audition? Where were you flying LA. from? LA. Oh, for, okay. And then I actually might believe you. So anyway, I get there. I go up to 30 Rock, 8H, Studio 8H. I do my little audition. I fly home and thinking, that's it. And two weeks later, I find myself sitting in front of Lorne Michaels in a high-rise in Beverly Hills. He's offering me a job. 